Here, here's a good question, guys. Here's we got we got 23 minutes left. This one may take us to the end. Here's a good question for you. If you had a, we made predictions all in the positives, right? If you had a predictor, if you had one worry about the one thing that can be this team's Achilles heel and and knock them completely out from where they think it's going to be, make the season go a complete 180 from what we're saying, what is it? What's that one thing that can go wrong that can cluster fuck this team? Other than the obvious, other than the obvious, other than Eli going down. See, I got I got one for you, dudes. I really do. Uh, I got the one, one, the one guy I would say, uh, other than Eli, like you said, I'm, I'm picking Eli out because I think that's completely obvious. I think it's Norris Jenkins. If he goes out for a significant amount of time, he's the one that follows the number one wide receiver everywhere. And I think that opens up opens us up. If we can't lock down that number one and almost not even worry about him once Norris is out there, that throws off the defense a little bit. Justin, what's your biggest worry? My biggest worry is offensively, uh, you know, production between the tackles, right? So, uh, and I'm going to include the tight ends in that discussion as well. I think we've I like that secured ourselves in the slot and outside the numbers. You know, we have the talent um, to be difference maker there, but we've we've put our eggs in in the uh red ellison basket uh you know from from a running back perspective i think that there's a lot of faith in perkins to take that next step that next leap and so that that's the position group offensively those tight ends the running backs the tackles that we're looking to definitely take that next step up and maybe we didn't invest as much there in frontline talent as we did bringing in Brandon Marshall and you know uh, you know some of the things that we did on the outside in previous drafts but uh, you know that's the that's the position group that we need to to take that that next leap that's the one that we're counting on so that's what it's going to come down to and most of the guys that we're counting on are unproven but uh, they they sure as hell better be better than Stony Brook's own Will Todd. I like that. I like that take. That's a hot take. Here, here. You want to know? You want to know what I'm? The the biggest thing I'm. It's weird. The thing that I'm worried about more than anything is Eli Manning. And it's not his injuries that I'm worried about. Or the fact that he may get injured and 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 that may destroy the season. That's that that's not it. I'm worried about turnover, Eli. Bad decision, Eli. Back foot, Eli. I'm worried about that. I don't. I, I said it, I said a couple of months ago when we were on the podcast that I didn't think there was any excuses for him this year. That last year, I'm willing to give him a pass, not only because of the tackles, which I think suffered, were, were, were a lot of the, the struggles on offense was the offensive line. But I also think a lot of that went into the receivers on the outside opposite of Beckham and no tight end threat in the middle of the field, not being able to get open. So I think when you put all the pieces together, Assuming the tackles will be better. And not even assuming the tackles will be better. Because you see it all over the fucking league. Guys like Tom Brady. Guys like Aaron Rodgers. Guys like uh, uh, Ben Roethlisberger. That no matter what, with the changes on the offensive line and shit like that, they coach guys up and they get it done. And Eli's gotten it done in key situations, but at times during the regular season, he's bit us in the ass in certain games and certain situations. The Giants always seem to have during the course of the season those couple of games where you're like, this is going to be a slobber knocker. We are going to kill this fucking team. And you show up, and it's 13-7, 
midway through the third quarter and the Giants are losing. And they scored a touchdown on their first drive and they looked phenomenal, but they've been biting themselves in the fucking foot ever since. That's my concern. Because I put that solely on the fucking shoulders of the quarterback. In today's day and age in the NFL, with these receivers running rampant all over the field, you can't touch him, you can't look at him, you can't breathe on him. There's no excuses with the weapons he has to not keep this defense off the field, matriculate the ball downfield, and consistently put points on the board. No more throwing the ball at receivers' fucking feet when they're running wide open or throwing the ball three yards behind them so they have to reach back and the ball gets intercepted. No more of it. No more of it. This is going to happen for the main reason being he doesn't have to force it all down anymore. You know, and that's what he was doing. I hope you're right. And, I know, it's and, he, does, and he has... Not only Brandon Marshall coming in, who has size, which obviously Eli's always love passing the bigger receivers. He also has Ingram as well. No, I, I, a I, couple I, guys with size that, you know, Eli's always going for his little, look like I'm just going to toss it up so I don't get sacked. You know, passes. He's always good for a, about one game. You know, Ingram or Marshall can go up and get it. And, you know, that's the one thing that, you know, for whatever reason, he liked to pass to Will Ty. Will Ty was not doing that. No. I, I, and, 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 I mean, I, yeah, I think there was a lot. And that's why I said I, I think a lot of it last year is I'm willing to give a, a lot of a pass because there were a lot of other things. But even dating back, like now going, you know, going back to, you know, we've seen this. You know, you, you've seen situations where the blocking has been good where there's a chance to step up in the pocket and throw the ball on a dime to somebody coming across the middle eight yards downfield, and the ball's just not on target. And one bad play cripples the drive. And if you can't get rhythm, eh. And I think balance goes with that. I think there's a lot of things that, that tie into that. It's not on one player, but sometimes a quarterback has to lift guys up And when things don't go right, you have to be the guy that makes the play. Now, in the big spot, does he do it? Yeah. We get to the playoffs, we put him in that position. There's no problems, and I'm not worried about him. We can get there. It's getting there. It's the the attrition getting through the course of 16 games that is one or two hiccups going to cost you home field advantage. That's my work. And and here's the thing with here's the thing with Eli, and and don't. Don't misunderstand what I'm about to say, Giants fans. You have to appreciate uh, everything when you talk about Eli, right? I absolutely. <laughs> I firmly, firmly am in Eli, the Eli Manning camp in the sense that he he's the best quarterback uh, that we could ask for. He's if he's not the best quarterback in team history. This guy, I don't even think you can have that argument, man. I, it's Eli. I mean, he, he's the he's only right. quarterback that we have. With two, yeah, he's the only quarterback we have with two Super Bowl rings. I mean, Sims is my favorite player, but I mean, you, you can't argue the numbers and, and, and the career. And it, it, technically, it, Sims has two rings. So yeah, but no, I mean, come on, let's, no, let's not. That's, not his that's like a Durant he, ring, man. That's, 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 like that's like a yeah, Durant. You know, no, Haas got Haas got him that ring. That's a Durant so, With all that said, with all that said, with all that disclaimer, you know, this next part of, of what I'm about to say is the most important. Uh, Eli, uh, throughout his career, for as good as he's been during the regular season, is, is prone to one to two mental errors per game at least. And, you know, games where they happen early, he's susceptible to what uh, we know as quicksand, right? Where things start going poorly, and, you know, before you know it, he's thrown us out of it because he he's not afraid of anything. Because he's got no blood pressure whatsoever. And that's, that's great. But what I want from Eli this season is I want him to realize pretty early on in camp, hey, I got the keys to a Mustang, 
And yep. all I got to do is not crash the car. It's going to get me exactly where I need to go, right? And when you think about it, in each Super Bowl run, you can kind of go back and watch those games and, and look at Eli and say, you know, he's making good decisions on every play. And that, I'm not saying he needs to make a great play, you know, every drive. He just needs yep. to not fuck up. have those one or two Eli plays a game where you're just like, what the fuck? What the, you know, what the hell? Yeah. Because those happen. I mean, let's be real. Those happen. And yep. with this team, if he eliminates those, nobody could stop him. 